today is the day. You've been asking for it. I said it was going to happen eventually. And I woke up this morning with purpose, with meaning in my life. I don't remember my dream, but it was probably a divine message from Evan Yu himself telling me, today, Ben, is the day that you try Vue.js. And I can't say no to that, so here we are. And I've said for a little while now that if I wasn't such a fan of React or I didn't want to use React, that I would probably be using Vue. But maybe like the past month or so, it kind of switched in my mind a little bit. What happened is I tried Svelte and I kind of liked it. And that might be my number two right now. So I'm excited to try Vue because I've never ever used Vue at all. And we're gonna see how it stacks up. I'm now faced with the eternal question that plagues all beginners. And that is, how do I learn Vue? What tutorial should I watch? What course should I go through? And I'm gonna let you in on a little secret right here. This is a pro tip that only senior developers know about. And we're gonna just head over to my best friend here, google.com, and I'm just gonna type Vue.js. And I'm gonna head on over to the official site. And I'm just gonna go to getting started and follow this guide. And I'm immediately faced with a dilemma. It looks like the current version is 2x and they have 3x and beta. And I've been hearing people talk a little bit about 3x and I'm kind of tempted to just try 3x and see the latest and greatest from Vue. So hopefully this does not backfire. Byte looks like the way to bootstrap our project. Vue, hello world. Okay, let's see what we got here. Source app.view. Uh-oh, my view code is emo. Let's see if we can fix that. Maybe install an extension. Text highlighting, let's go. Okay, we're good now. Oh, look at that, hello world counter example already done. I say done, but I just mean it's running now because I didn't actually make this yet. So let's take a look at the code for just this counting example. So I see a script tag, we got an object, and this object has a name of our component, I'm guessing the props, which is a message. And then we have some data here where we're returning a count of zero. And then we are just straight mutating this count with what looks like an on click handler. Okay, use at sign. We're displaying a prop here. First thing I'm noticing is we do double curly brace. Okay. And then we're displaying our count here. Okay, makes sense. This is a type. Message is of the type string. What is going on here? Is Vue using TypeScript or is this just the string object that it's going to make me pass a message in? Let's see. Okay, so here's us rendering hello world message and what happens if I don't listen to you? And I make this message five. What in the world? Okay, so I this is me before I saved it. I save it and Prettier made this into a string. Okay, hold on, maybe I need to do this. Is that how I pass? Dang it, how do I pass numbers? So I'm in the props documentation and it looks like they just pass numbers as strings and then it parses it out to be a non-string. At least maybe here, I think what I have to do is in my props, I say this is a number or something and it parses it to a number, but that's just my guess. So all right, let's remove that. So now if I say message plus five, that displays 55. Okay, so now what if I say this is a number? No, okay, I was wrong. So the answer was right in front of my face, but I just didn't read their little comment here. I have to use vbind, that way it's a JavaScript expression. So let's go back to our app. All right. Okay, I don't need to, I'm refreshing, but I don't think I need to. I think it just auto does its thing. So what happens if I make this a string now? What was that doing? I feel like that was just prop types. I'm gonna open up the console here. Yeah, okay, that's just their version of prop types. Invalid prop, gotcha. Okay, so that's useless. Okay, okay, two-way binding, not bad, not bad. It's easy to toggle the presence of an element too. If seen, vf. Oh, does it handle the null case for you? Let's go. Easy peasy. We're now doing for loops, v4. Why am I coding everything with strings? This feels weird. So what I'm wondering now is with this, if I integrate their TypeScript support, because I know you can use TypeScript with Vue, at least I think you can. 
is how much like IntelliSense and stuff can we get with these weird string things. Add script lang ts, <laughs> and I have to get the vchur extension, define component. Okay, so now we got some language support things. Got some linting. We, I don't have a todo.id. Okay, that allows it. I wonder if there's something else I have to config for that. So I made it to the end of the TypeScript docs, and I didn't see anything about types for in the HTML bit up here. I only saw stuff within the defined component, which makes me kind of sad if they don't have it, but I'm guessing I just probably missed it somewhere. Let's go to our handy dandy Google friend, view TypeScript HTML part. So I spent a whole two minutes Googling this and I'm not seeing anything. So hopefully there is a view expert watching this video that may know how to do this. Otherwise, I'm just gonna have to live my life with 80% TypeScript support and maybe that's okay, but it just makes me like a little bit sad. All right, I think it's time for us to try making our own to-do list. And we'll use our V model and we're connecting it to text. And bam, we already have our form done. Now we just push on this.text and this is gonna be an object. So this is gonna be text and complete is gonna be false. Parameter E implicitly has any type. Is there not a way to get TypeScript to infer that this is an event type? I guess there's not a way in view, that's kind of sad. But maybe there is, I mean, I'm just a view noob, what do I know? Um, but because I'm passing it in here, I can't just like stick a, a stick a lambda there. HTML form event. And so here's the thing. In types, in React, how I would figure this out is I would hover over the handler and the handler would tell me what the param type is. But I don't know how to do that in view. I don't know what this type is. Well, I know what this type is now. Some vanilla CSS, haven't seen that in a while. I'm just typing the word class. Feels very weird. Feels very weird that that's not there. <laughs> App for does not work, even though it doesn't air out. But of course it doesn't air out because that works as well. And it doesn't do TypeScript checking, but I forgot about that stuff. So I was just like, you know what? It's not mad at me. Of course it's okay. Okay, let's go back to correct syntax now to do dot complete is equal to not to do dot complete. Nice, it actually works. I like writing stuff like that. Okay, that syntax is actually kind of nifty. So I guess if this variable is true, it shows a class called active. Bam, piece of cake. What I've heard is really nice in view is their state management. So I wanna try Vuex next. So let's hop on over to the docs. Information for React developers. Hey, that's me. So you may be wondering how Vuex compares to Redux. You know what? I am wondering that. How does it compare? Redux is actually view layer agnostic. Vuex is different. It knows that it's in a view app. This allows it to better integrate with Vue, offering a more intuitive API and improved development experience. Shots fired at Redux, but I'm glad it's more intuitive and a cleaner API, let's see it. I started doing the Vuex getting started and I copied this from their docs and I tried importing use from Vue and it didn't exist for some reason. I hovered over it, it says no exported member. So I was like, huh, that's weird, I'll just go Google it. And I figured it had to do something to do with Vue 3 because I'm using the beta or something, right? And I see all these articles talking about how you might not need Vuex with Vue 3. And I was like, hmm, you know what? This sounds really familiar. I'm like, when React Contexts come out, all the articles are like, do you still need to use Redux with React Context? And they're going through the same thing in Vue 3. So I thought that was kind of funny. So anyway, I'm ditching Vuex. I'm just going to use the cool Vue 3 reactive stuff. This reminds me of MobX, but kind of even cleaner than MobX because you don't have to wrap your components in like observer things. So you can create reactive variables like MobX or create reactive store things. And then I just pass this source of truth object to my view components, return it here. This is my first component. And then I have access to that count and then I just literally mutate the count here, like nobody's business, right? And then just increments it. And then I also have this component one over here, which is the exact same component, and they're just sharing the state between the two of them, right? And then when I increment this one, it increments that. That's pretty dope.
that was actually like zero boilerplate whatsoever to like access this i really like that okay that's probably enough vue.js for one day overall i really enjoyed it probably my biggest gripe would be with typescript and not getting like typescript things in the html template part and like not for prop names like i want to tell me when i misspell a prop or something like that which may even exist they might have some kind of linting for that and it just i'm just a noob and i don't know about it yet and also like TypeScript inference would be nice for these things. But other than that, it was pretty nice. Like I can nit pick a little bit if I really want to. Like it felt a little bit weird to like write a string, right? But you could say the same thing. You know, they probably say it's weird to do curly braces like that if they're coming from or going to react. And then also like, this is like a small thing. This was weirding me out. Why are they the same color? I want my I want my prop and my prop data to be different colors. That would be nice. But anyway, I did like it and the API is very clean. I enjoyed like how little boilerplate there was. I really enjoyed just mutating stuff. Like this was probably my favorite part of the entire experience was just being able to mutate a single to-do item and then it just magically re-renders and handles that entire thing for me. That's super nice. Vue is definitely on par with Svelte for me. They felt very similar, but I've only really done the basics of both. And I'll probably develop a preference for one or the other after spending a little bit more time with each. But uh, just between you and me, React is still the king.